Well, today it, um, it is still the case that the underlying pressure for companies is um, to increase profits every year, and, and that's the fundamental driver um, of the capital system in which we live. Uh, the ongoing contradictions of sharing the wealth versus ever-increasing profits. Um, this is at the heart of employers developing tactics to reduce the cost of labour. <coughs> it's by no accident. Uh, but this is not new, as Troy has already pointed out. Um, but coupled with the financial crisis, companies paying less tax, the austerity drive, and the ever-increasing expenditure on war, all this together is squeaky, squeezing today's workers like they've never been, um, they've never experienced. Life is rapidly getting harder for all workers in all countries around the world. Most people in Australia today, m most people are employed in precarious employment or under underemployed. One in four live on or below the official poverty line. There's an ever-increasing unorganised sector, and some of the more latest ones, which don't even get a look in, Uber drivers, Airbnb uh, cl cleaners, and, and people trying to make money um, out of that. Uh, online from home, call centres are now in your own home. You don't go to a call centre anymore, you work, you, you work from home. Um, even people that set up their own businesses to do so online designing, most of their customers are from overseas uh, in Australia today. Um, so things are rapidly um, uh, changing. And of course there's going to be the robotics and the driverless um, cars, etc, etc. Um, since the accord in the 1980s, bosses have successfully been implementing their tactics to, um, to cut costs. Things like breaking some of the key sector unions, um, over the years, I think, think of the meat workers, inspectors, airline pilots, um, even the BLF to some extent, but that was saved with the amalgamation. Um, the MUA, um, uh, in, in, in some respects. Uh, so breaking some of the, some, winning some key disputes. Body hire is now rife. The labour hire is, um, is, is very, very common. ABNs is uh, the norm in, in some sectors. Outsourcing is almost complete. 457 visas are at an all-time high. The destruction of the Arbitration and Conciliation Act in 2006 has never um, been reversed. We still operate under the new um, uh, Corporate Individual um, Act. Downsizing contracts, which is relatively new, are being successful with the exception of the CUB. Um, where the unions were able to, to defeat that. But while that was happening, there were others in the offshore rigs for some other unions, etc., that have been successful. Um, and the bosses will continue uh, to use that tactic. Uh, moving back to the awards um, is another thing that's undermining um, particularly the EBA unions um, and a recent decision last week for the Valley Power Workers um, to... to uh, the, the AGL was successful in, app, in applying for, the, for the, uh, the agreement to be nullified and to move back on to the award. And that's, um, uh, that's not the end of it, but um, that is something that the bosses are going to keep pursuing. And I'll just give you an example of why they do this and where it's been really successful. The cleaning industry as a whole, once upon a time, cleaners worked for schools, uh, the hotel, etc., and they were directly employed. Pretty much all cleaners today are under, with a contractor. So you've got the case in Westfield where workers, a bloke's worked there for 27 years as a cleaner in Westfield. He started out with Bay City Plaza. He's had five contractors. Each time they've had to go on strike to win, to get moved to the next contractor who every five years Westfield changes the contract. He starts off as a day one employee. So 27 years later, he's got no long service leave is the only one, we won the blue again last year, I think it was. So he went on the, um, as a day one, so he's got no long service leave, he's got no sickies. Now this is right across the industry, and they're all, they're all doing it, they all rotate the contracts over five years. So essentially, that industry, that employers, cleaners, whether it's the MCG or the Crown Casino or whatever, they've got away with not paying billions of dollars over the years to that whole layer of workers. 
and it's not, it's, it's not noticed that much because they're already on the award. So it's not like they're being like the CUB workers have been dropped off a, an EBA and, and down. These workers are already on the bones of the arse, but that's a tactic that the bosses have successfully implemented and continue to do so. Well, the response has, has been mixed. You know, the ACTU, their, their Congress is coming up shortly and they are doing a review. They've got four or five pillars um, that they're, they're going through and they're having round table sessions, et cetera, et cetera, with unions. And there's going to be some proposals, but everything that I've seen so far is pretty much lined up around um, consolidation, amalgamation, sharing of resources, resources, basically buttoning down the hatches and seeing where they can grow in um, some easy areas. And that's not going to be easy even um, with, it, with, any, with, with that sort of plan because at the moment, what they said at the last Congress is they need 200,000 per year new members to sustain the ones that are leaving, either retirements or industries closing or people just uh, quitting. So 200,000 new recruits each year. If they want to get back to 20% density by 2020, we've got to recruit 300,000 members per year to be able to do that for the union movement across the board. Now that's a lot of inspiration. That's a lot of excited people, I can tell you, um, to be able to achieve that. At a more local level, the Victorian Trades Hall is building and trying to build, and they, they call it political power um, in the workplace. They are involving youth. There is a lot more youth around Victorian Trades Hall today than there was three years ago. Um, but it is limited. Um, and they've limited themselves to the parliamentary election, marginal seats campaign, and in, in influencing the ALP um, in, 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 terms, in terms of power. Um, unions in general, most uh, on a steady as she goes, um, sh share the spoiled, a tripartite type agreement as the plumbers um, uh, explained to me the other week, um, where the client, the bosses, and the unions all get a fair share and it's all taken care of and the training and the superannuation, et cetera, et cetera. Lo lovely, a lovely uh, world to live in. Um, the, the 1980s leadership, the vast, but the, you think of the boys, the Mary Blewitts, the, um, um, the, the Dave Oliver, Martin King, and some, some of my um, uh, former secretaries, they're all retiring. So there's a massive change and Troy and um, Craig and uh, et cetera re uh, reflecting that. Um, there's various reform groups that are, um, that are happening um, or, or, or starting to happen. Um, there's, uh, there's newly elected leaders that have actually won, like um, Craig, <coughs> and, um, and there's, new, there's new unions forming. Um, but when they poll workers in Australia today, the biggest issues affecting workers that they say is their biggest problem is housing, rent, affordability, health and education. And they're three things that generally the unions don't have anything to do with. So you've got the whole of the Australian workforce worried about this, and you've got the ACTU and the rest of the trade union movement, in general speaking, worried about um, uh, a couple of other things. Um, and that, that's not something that they, I think, needs to be grappled with. And then there is a critical and exciting time to be a unionist um, and to get involved in union activity. We're very good at articulating, we as socialists are very good at articulating what's going on um, and explaining the economics of it and, and, and et cetera, et cetera. But what would you really do if you were the secretary of a union today? Uh, I think there's too, far too many on the left in general that are doing a lot of finger waving and you should and you should and you should just pay, don't pay the fines and don't do this, et cetera, et cetera. But we need to be able to do more than that. Um, now, we're not big enough ourselves to organise, to call all the unions together and organise a five-pack conference. Uh, um, that, 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 but we do have good activists who do contribute and play big roles um, uh, and important roles in rank and file groups. And we, we know the MUA uh, with Chris Keynes, Dick Nichols over in Perth, um, members in the... Um, uh, in the IMW, etc., etc. I better get to my proposal. I shouldn't have done the example. Um, <laughs> but we're also very good at helping with education and propaganda. And one of the key things that we do have is a national apparatus of a weekly Green Left Weekly publication 
that nobody else has. It's on a weekly basis. Even some of the, the age and all that's not, not even going to have um, uh, this very shortly on the streets. And it's on this point that I want to propose um, that we seek to start an open debate and discussion on how best to respond to the bosses by trying to get some statements or interviews published each month in Greenleaf Weekly from as many of the progressive union secretaries as we can. Um, with the view of stimulating education, um, stimulation and, and agitation, um, Troy Gray from the ETU, Craig McGregor from BARPA, and Chris Keynes from the MUA and WA have already agreed to contribute to um, about those statements or, or, or interviews to share their views on what um, they think that we should, um, that should be happening over the next few years. <laughs> Now, obviously not everything's going to be in print. There's a lot of things that you don't want to do to tip your hand, etc. Um, but I think everyone will be able to get the gist of it. Then hopefully, out of this discussion, um, we, can, we can have enough inspiration for some of the progressive secretaries to host, host a Five Fact Conference that we can then carry forward and implement um, aims at the bosses, um, a, a campaign aimed at the bosses that all, all workers uh, can help with. So comrades, we can plan, prepare, and win. And in the words of uh, Dick Nichols, sometimes when you fight, you do lose. But if you don't fight, you have already lost. Thank you.